Executive Director Evgenia Hyderabad to kindly present the envelopes to our distinguished dignitaries on the stage. Guest of Honor, Special Chief Secretary, ITEMC, Industries and Commerce, Government of Telangana, Sri Jay Sanjayji. Special Guest, Sri VKT Nosar, Managing Director of Walsho International Private Limited. Respected Executive Director, Sir, FDDI, Hyderabad, Sri and GL Reddy. Esteemed faculty members, staff, guardians, industry leaders, dear graduates, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a great honor to welcome you all to the convocation ceremony of FDDI Hyderabad. Today is a momentous occasion as we gather to celebrate the achievements of our graduating students. And I am delighted to share this special day with all of you. First, I extend my deepest gratitude to our Chief Guest, Honorable Sri Governor Sri Vishnu Dev Barma, for gracing this event with your presence. To your work in field of politics, literature, and art, and we are privileged to have you here today. To our guests of honor, our honorable guests and we are truly thankful for your presence. Your tireless work and commitment to the state development has set a powerful example for all of our future leaders. Sri V K C Nosarji, we are delighted to have you with us. Your accomplishment in footwear industry exemplify innovation and entrepreneurship. Today, we eagerly anticipate your valuable insights. To our graduating students, today is your day. It is a celebration of your hard work, creativity, and resilience. Your time at FDDI Hyderabad has prepared you with knowledge, skills, and connections that will help you shape your future. As we you we move forward, always remember that success is not uh, just measured by your accomplishments, but the impact you are going to make on the society. To our faculty and staff, thank you for your unwavering commitment 
guidance and support that has been instrumental in success of these students. We acknowledge and appreciate your invaluable contribution. To parents and guardians, your support and belief in our students have been crucial to their journey. We thank you for your confidence in us. As we proceed to with the conferral of degrees and awards, we reaffirm our dedication to fostering talent, promoting innovations, and cultivating leadership. Let us come together to honor the accomplishments of our graduates and celebrate the spirit of excellence that defines every day in Hyderabad. Let us take a moment to honor the accomplishments of our graduates and reflect on the bright futures they are about to create. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2024. We wish you all the success in life and career. Thank you. Hello, Saint Lazarus, India's rich cultural heritage, and is handcrafted in the tradition of Nimalakunda leather puppetry, a traditional art form from Anandapur district, Andhra Pradesh. This elegant piece, created by National and State Awardee Mr. Kande Bhaskar Rao, showcases the intricate craftsmanship of Tolu Bommalata, a traditional leather craft known for its delicate carvings and vibrant colors. Made from goat leather and natural dyes, this memento reflects the timeless storytelling traditions of the region and stands as a symbol of India's enduring cultural legacy. As a gesture of appreciation. I now invite Dr. Anjil Reddy, IAS, Executive Director of FPDI Hyderabad, to speak at the event. Government of Telangana. Now, let's hear from the pillar of this institution, our very own Dr. NTL Reddy, IAS Executive Director, FDDI Hyderabad, to kindly deliver the presidential address. The Dias, Honorable Governor of Telangana, Sri Krishna Dev Varma, Sir, Sri J.S. Ranjan IAS, Sri V. Naushet, Sri U. Vakaru, my colleagues present here, and to special guests of today, that is the outgoing students of 2020 batch and their parents. A very welcome, warm welcome to all of you. First of all, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the Honorable Shia. And a special thanks to V. Naushat CEO Vakaru Guru who have passed out of this institution. Since I joined one year back, the institute has taken several steps to improve the quality of education. Not only quality of education, but also various aspects like infrastructure, cultural activities, etc. We have taken steps. FDDI Hyderabad has started actively tying up with various stakeholders like state government agencies, Cisco, APCO, T-Works, Lidka, and private organizations like Kia, etc. This outreach helped in increasing the learning opportunities for students, providing them access to valuable information. We have also taken several steps to link MOUs with various national institutions like AIMS, NID, NIFT to promote inter-institutional collaboration and class learning. We also regularly interact with state government institutions like Government Institute of Leather Technology and other national institutions like Indian Institute of Packaging, etc. We are actively associated with few startups in the state who are being provided with technical and other support like machinery, renting, etc. at very minimal costs. FDDI Hyderabad has tied up with KVIC and is offering training to artisans from the cobbler community to enhance their skills. Around 20 such artisans were trained in the year 2023-24. A new girls hostel is being constructed with an investment of 16 crores funded by GOI. A center of excellence has been started in 2023 to promote research and industry linkages. A new non-leather set lab is set up in the footwear department, keeping in mind the market shift to non-leather footwear. A student store has been started with the intention of showcasing student products. A consultancy website has been started under the name saily.co.in to offer consultancy to industry and government agencies in areas related to design. 
FDA is also exploring international linkages with universities like Thomas Bata University of Czech Republic and other reputed ones in footwear, leather and fashion sector. We are continuously striving to improve the quality of teaching in the institute and we hope to live up to the standards of Institute of National Importance. As we are growing, I have a message to the outgoing students of 2020 batch. My dear students, wherever you intend to go next, may it be an educational institution in India or abroad or a job, you must give your fullest to the task at hand and ensure quality in whatever you do. Then only you will succeed because quality matters in life. I also request you to actively engage with your alma mater for various activities like guest lectures, consultancy or technical support. All 12 campuses of FDDA can support your entrepreneurial activities if any. Also, I suggest you make teams to reduce risk and pool resources whenever you are starting an entrepreneurial activity. With this message, I once again congratulate the batch of 2020 and the batch staffers are also congratulated. Thank you. Reggie Garu, esteemed faculty, distinguished guests, and the proud graduating class of 2024. Good morning to all of you. It's a great honor to join you today for this convocation. This occasion marks the end of a journey filled with hard work and creativity, not only for graduates, but also for families, mentors, and faculty who supported you. Dear graduates, today is your day. Congratulations on your achievement. You are stepping into a world of endless possibilities and I am excited to see where your journey takes you. India holds a significant position as the world's second largest producer of footwear, contributing around 2% of GDP. This industry is about more than numbers, it's about innovation, design and craftsmanship. With the global shift towards eco-friendly and non other products, there is a huge potential for growth, especially for Indian entrepreneurs and startups. Our Honorable Commerce and Industry Ministry, Minister Sri Piyush Goyal has set an ambitious target for Indian footwear industry, growing from $23 billion to $90 billion by 2030 and increasing the employment from 4 million to 10 million jobs. To achieve this, we must boost exports, build strong raw material ecosystems, promote startups, and support MSMEs with market research and production guidance. Institutes like FPDI are crucial to the future of our industry. By fostering closer ties between academia and industry, we can drive innovation enhance research and ensure that our workforce is prepared for future challenges. This collaboration is key to building a sustainable growth path. Graduates, you have the power to shape the future of this industry. Sustainable products or manufacturing excellence or contributions, your contributions will drive the industry forward. This is an opportunity not just to build your careers, but to make a difference in this industry and in the nation. As we strive for progress, let us remember our role in nation building. Together, by fostering innovation and working towards common goals, we can build a more prosperous India. In conclusion, this is just the beginning for all of you. The skills and knowledge you have gained at FPDA will be the foundation for your success. Embrace the opportunities and let us build the legacy virus a developed and thriving India. Thank you and congratulations to graduating class of FDA Hyderabad. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you. Sharing your valuable insights. It is our great pleasure to invite our esteemed guests of the IT Department of the Telangana Government. He is a distinguished member of the Indian Administrative Service from the 1992 past currently serves as the Special Chief Secretary for the Industries and Commerce and Information Technology Department of the Telangana Government. He has been instrumental in developing policy frameworks, attracting investments, and promoting digital empowerment in North States. He holds a master's in psychology from Delhi University 
a business management degree from the Indian Institute of Management, Kolkata, and a master's in public management from the National University of Singapore. His exceptional is complemented by his participation in international programs and has seen institutions such as Harvard University, the London School of Economics, and University of Birmingham. Throughout his career, he has held various key roles, including Commissioner and Managing Director of the Industries Department and Secretary of the Tourism Promotion Department, Vice Chairman of the Hyderabad Urban Development Authority, each for two to three years. Additionally, he has spent over 12 years in various rural assignments across the state, contributing to sectors like tribal development, natural resources management, party alleviation, and other related social development sectors. His contributions extend beyond government, having worked on international consultancy projects for the World Bank, United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, and several NGOs. In recognition of his efforts to promote Swedish business interests in India, he was awarded the Royal Order of the Polar Star by His Majesty, the King of Sweden. He is also deeply engaged in numerous social, cultural, and charitable initiatives and serves on the boards of several organizations. His leadership and dedication have earned him widespread recognition, including an honorary doctorate from the University of Boston for his contribution to bilateral trade and investment. We are honored to have him with us today. So, we now request you to kindly share your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, His Excellency, Governor of Telangana, Sri Vishnu Dev Barmagaru, Executive Director, MPBI, Sri Tej Lohit Reddy Garu, Mr. Naushar Tugudan, distinguished uh, guests, faculty members, staff, students, family members. First of all, heartfelt congratulations to all the students who are graduating today. May all of you have the best of future lying ahead of you. I'm sure as a part of your course, you would have been given proper uh, details on how is the leather landscape emerging in our country. And I'm sure all of you would know that so far, for the last few decades, China was considered to be the epicenter of this leather industry, but off late, particularly due to geopolitical issues and also aggressive policies of our national government like Make in India, like Atman Nirbhar Bharat, the fulcrum is now shifting from China. I myself have been to Shanghai a few years ago and uh, many of the manufacturers were keen that they should establish their manufacturing units in other countries also because uh, if they continue to manufacture in China, their customers will start having hesitations and issues and there could be problems. So just to secure their uh, supply line, they wanted to diversify to other countries also. In our country, leather therefore has become a sector of tremendous importance and I feel very proud to share with you that amongst the six, seven states which are considered to be important for promoting this sector, Telangana also is counted as one such because uh, we have very progressive policy. Some of you would be aware since 10 years, we have this policy called PSI pass and uh, we allow uh, absolute ease of doing business. We have done away with the requirement of approval, permissions, etc. We also have uh, dedicated infrastructure for the leather industry. We already have existing tanning units close to Hyderabad in uh, Nalgonda and Hongi district, but we also have dedicated leather parks. We have many leather parks, three of them in the state, but we have been asking government of India to, san- to sanction a mega leather park also, somewhere in Barangal district, where the government is willing to provide land, etc. And more than uh, infrastructure, policies, etc., because of the presence of institutions like the FDDI, we have a steady flow of highly talented uh, manpower in our state. Some of you would be aware, since you are coexisting in this campus, you might have seen just next door is the office of the State Leather Promotion Corporation, which is called DICCO. And we have an arrangement with CLRI Chennai, and every year we send students from Telangana, prospective entrepreneurs from Telangana to take uh, short courses 
and some of them stay back to do long courses also. And the state government completely funds their uh, uh, their education. And uh, in preparation for today's event, I was trying to get the number, how many students have been trained in the last uh, 10 years. It's a very large number. Close to 450 students of Telangana have received high level training in uh, both FDBI and in uh, CLRI. And therefore, there is a good uh, manpower. More than anything else, uh, for uh, this industry to really thrive and flourish, easy availability of raw material is very important. And while, uh, as E.D. pointed out in his speech, while uh, importance to non-leather uh, weaving is also becoming important, but still almost 95% of the industry still requires leather raw material. The hides of uh, buffaloes and sheep and goat, etc. And again, I'm uh, <coughs> happy to share with you that in the entire country today, again, because of some very targeted programs run by our state government, we had a distribution program of cattle, of sheep, of goat, etc. Over the last 10 years, our population has more than doubled. And uh, again, all of you would know this, that we don't have any social challenges in promoting this leather industry, which is uh, unfortunately seen in some other states today. So, we are extremely well poised today and uh, since Mr. Noshad is there, he heads uh, CP, I had uh, reached out to him, I had tried to reach out to him in the past also, but uh, now that he's here in person. I'm sure he will promote the uh, <coughs> opportunities available in Telangana to his fellow industries because unless the industry grows and we grab a large segment of what is happening in China, Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, etc. towards India, uh, we will not be able to assure if the brightest of the future to the students, some of the most talented students that come out from institutions like the SBTI. Of course, uh, becoming an entrepreneur is also an option, but let us have both the opportunities available. If you want to get into the organized industry, there must be rich and very promising opportunities available for you. And if you want to become an entrepreneur also, there must be a very supportive ecosystem. And again, I feel very proud to share that in Telangana, we have a very, very robust ecosystem to support entrepreneurship. Some of you might have seen, it is not very far from here, institutions like T-Hub, T-Work. In fact, we mentioned that you have a tie-up with T-Work where some of the most uh, cutting-edge prototyping facilities are here. Similarly, we have an institution like V-Hub. So, uh, if you want to prepare yourself for uh, embarking upon an entrepreneurial journey, we are there to support you. And hopefully, we will be rap rapidly seeing the presence of many more industries in our state. So, if you want to get into an industrial position, that opportunity will also be there. So, I reciprocate what uh, E.D. mentioned, that uh, you should uh, persevere, you should give your best, and uh, definitely the world is available for you for talent more than anything else. So once again, good wishes to all of you. And thank you, Mr. Reddy, for uh, inviting me here. Thank you. We now move on to an important moment, our own ceremony. I invite Mr. Abdul Rehman, Senior Faculty and Attorney of School of Footwear Design and Production to lead our graduating students in taking the oath. I request graduates to rise for the oath taking ceremony. Dear Armani, please rise to the right hand and follow me for the convocation oath. I take the oath of God. I take the oath of God that I always I, I will always use my active knowledge and education with the full sincerity of my professional business. I will always maintain the integrity of the individual reputation and the business with my positive and a holistic effort my educational institution society country and the humanity will always increase I will always support the national values and the ethical ethics in my business. Yes. 
Before we move on to the next segment of our program, I would like to take a moment to introduce our esteemed chief guest, His Excellency Sri Jishu Dev Verma, the Honorable Governor of Telangana, and a deep commitment to the welfare of society. His Excellency is also known as Vishnu Dev Burman and affectionately called Vishnu Karta is a distinguished politician from Tripura and served as the Deputy Chief Minister of the State of Tripura. He was prominent member of the North Eastern Council Advisory Committee from 1989 to 1993. He played a pivotal role in shaping policies for the North Eastern region. He also served as a convener of the Indian National Trust for Art and Cultural Heritage, Tripura Chapter, and coordinated initiatives for the trust in the North East. He embarked on his political journey with the Bharatiya Janta Party in 1993 and was elected as a National Council member representing Tripura. He held the position of General Secretary overseeing organizational matters for the Tripura Pradesh BJP. In 2018, he contested the state assembly election from the 19 Sarilang ST constituency where he garnered an unprecedented victory securing 89.33% of the total votes cast. A multifaceted artist, his creative spirit finds expression in modern art, paintings and sculptures. His work, infused with vibrant themes, grace various tourist spots temples and pub public spaces often in collaboration with Sanskar Bharti. A poet and writer for considerable repute, his poetry in Bengali and English has touched the hearts of many. His work, notably featured in his book, Children of Water Goddess and Master of Time, are celebrated for their innovative and lyrical quality. He possesses a deep and passionate commitment to travel development, education, health and art and culture, Known for his affable personality, he enjoys engaging with people from all walks of life, always making time to connect with a common man. In his own words, his philosophy of life is an opportunity to offer a healing touch to those living on the margins. Thank you, ma'am, for the wonderful introduction. Now comes the most awaited part of the ceremony, the award distribution. This is a moment of immense pride and honor for our students. I kindly request our chief guest, His Excellency Sri Jishnu Devarma, Honorable Governor of Telangana, to present the medals. The gold medal is awarded to Ms. Navitri Kantam Reddy from B Design FBP 2024, School of Woodway Design and Production. They have done the best outstanding academic performance and excellence in design innovation. They have demonstrated remarkable creativity and leadership throughout their academic journey and making them a true inspiration to their peers. Let's give her a, let's give them a huge round of applause. Next, we have the silver medals, which goes to the following outstanding students for their exceptional achievements and dedication through, throughout their course. They have work and determination have set a benchmark of excellence for others to follow. Ms. Nakashri Kanchan Reddy from the B Design FTP 2020-24 School of Woodway Design and Production. Design. Ms. Shriya, Shriya Srivastava from the B Design LJD 2024 School of Leather Goods and X ray Design.
Ms. Nupur from the APAR from 2022-24 School of Retail and Fashion Merchandising. Let's take a moment to congratulate the winners once again. A huge round of applause for their exceptional achievement. CJS Ranjan IS, Special Secretary, Secretary, Department of Information Technology. Dr. T. Louis Reddy, IS, Executive Director, FD, FDGI. Mohamed Kofran, HOD, Gather Lifestyle and Product Development. He knows her direction. Today we gather not just to celebrate the completion of academic programs, but to acknowledge the years of hard work, dedication, and perseverance that have brought you to this moment. This ceremony is a testament of your resolve to turn aspirations into reality. MCTI has the vast stand as an epitome of excellence. More skilled professionals receive the footwear, design, fashion, retail, and other goods. The institution's role in developing talent for this rapidly evolving industry is pivotal to India's rise on the global stage. It is indeed a matter of great pride that MCTI empowers students not only with knowledge and technical skills, but with the creativity and passion needed to elevate India's position in the global marketplace. Your executive director had come to me last night, and uh, when I heard about this vision, I spent some time with him. It was very interesting. And uh, as I entered your institution, I went to the institution that you have put, that such creativity exists in the institution. And the design is one thing that I am very fond of because, you know, it expresses the human aspiration in the point of form. It gives the form to human aspiration. And uh, it is a thing that we believe in India, that all knowledge must be wedded to science. Science and knowledge, there is no distinction in India. We don't distinguish between science and knowledge. In Bhagavad Gita itself, you know, Lord Krishna told Arjuna, Jnana Vijnana Sahita. That is the ultimate knowledge. To integrate science and art together. And design is one field in which we see the literal and art together. In the Western world, we have a sedimentation. This is science and this is art. In India, we don't have that. Our classical music is both scientific and artistic. Our classical dances are both artistic and scientific. Our vocal on the raga, the ragi is of the classical, both artistic and scientific. So designing is something that you know that we excel in. When you see the architecture of India, when you see the ornaments, the jewelry of India. This is the costumes of India. We have been proud of them because it shows our excellence. I'm happy that this institution has got recognition, recognition as institution of national importance. And all of you are graduating today. I congratulate you, especially the gold and silver medalists. The chief special chief secretary was saying, how come all women are getting it? In many universities, I see a lot of you know, girls getting the medals more than men. And this is the age of women empowerment. And I'm happy that the you know, girls are coming forward. <laughs> the diversity between our time, we never thought they would come. It's a sign of India marching forward. Because you cannot, you cannot leave half society is girls and women. Leave half of society behind. So it is very encouraging that all institutions, there are a lot of girls studying there, a lot of students. 
and they were getting gold medal and silver medal. Not that I'm running down the boy. They too have to do well. Others will be left behind. So that is the spirit of, you know, education to take everyone along. And this, I am sure, that all of you guys used to be some will be, you know, job providers. Some will be job providers. And some will be, you know, working hard to realize their dreams. And there is no substitute for hard work. Once when you know, someone asked Einstein, Albert Einstein, what is the secret of your success, sir? He answered, 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. This is 1% inspiration, 99% hard work. I am very happy that all of you will be part of this Dixit Bharat that we are talking about. Especially in this field of leather technology and leather goods and designing. So this is important. As the special chief secretary was saying, and Telangana is giving a lot of opportunities. Many other states don't have the opportunities that you have here. And I'm glad to learn about this. Being a governor of the state, I am very happy to know that a new field in Northeast is very new. In, uh, I come from the Northeast, the smallest state known as Tripura, and there we don't have what we have, we don't have. So we must make the best of it. And uh, I am very happy that to be here, and uh, I am always happy to meet you know with students and with passing out students who are stepping into the world. Because I remember what Bhaskar had once told us when we were young like him, or a little bit older than him. He had told us one day, you know, he told us a story in Guwahati when he was having a meeting with him. And uh, this foreign journalist, a big journalist, foreign journalist came to him and asked him, you are such a statesman, tell us what is the future of India? And he told the IP, he told the, he told us, he told the Journalist, why have you come here wasting your time? If you want to know the future of India, go to the institutions, go to the colleges, schools, look into the eyes of the students there. The hopes and the aspirations that you see in their eyes is the image of India, of the future. So when I stand before you, I can see the future of India, filled with hope, aspirations, bubbling with energy, Dynamism, and I see the girls who are doing so well. I take pride in the fact that today my country is taking everyone along. We are not biased in any way whatsoever. So this is the spirit that will make pictures in India, and you will be a part of it. So I am glad to address you today, and congratulations to all of you for graduating. Fulfill your dreams. Actually, Abdul Kalam, our Former President once said, dreams are not something that puts you to sleep. Dreams are something that won't let you sleep. So fulfill your dreams, your aspirations, and make the nation strong. With this word, I end my small speech here. I thank, I thank the institution for inviting me. It's an experience for me also to see this exhibition and to meet young people who are in design. As I said, design is the Creativity in action. So thank you again. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Mr. C. Venugopal, Senior Faculty, School of Leather Goods and Accessory Design Department, to deliver the word of thanks. And National President of CIPI, respected age members, parents, and guardians, and our young graduates. A very good morning to all of you. A great vote of thanks on behalf of the FTPI to our esteemed and distinguished dignitaries for their gracious presence and insightful contributions to the fourth convocation ceremony. Your expertise, guidance, and invaluable inputs and advice have enriched this event immensely. We are truly honored by your presence and the time you have dedicated to this event. Your support and encouragement means a great deal to us all. Thank you once again for gracing us with your presence. 
your contributions will undoubtedly leave a lasting impression on this event and its participants. Respected Executive Director uh, Dr. NPL Reddy sir, thank you so much for showing our students the path to all-round growth, development and giving them the much required opportunities and exposure to gain apt knowledge and first-hand insights and focus on innovation and excellence. Graduating batch, I would like to express deep gratitude to all those who have contributed to the academy journey and made this momentous occasion possible, of which the first and foremost are the parents and guardians. Your unwavering support, love and sacrifices have been instrumental in their success. Your belief in them has given them the strength and courage to overcome challenges and reach this milestone. I would like to thank all the faculty members for your dedication and efforts in guiding the students and shaping them into young, dynamic professionals through your mentorship. We owe special thanks to all the supporting teams, right from the creators of today's Indians, the planners, executors, administrators, and to the backend team working relentlessly to ensure seamless execution of today's event, taking utmost care of the minutest of the details. As our young and dynamic graduates embark on this new chapter of their lives, they carry with them the knowledge, skills, and experiences gained from this institution. The achievement is well deserved, earned through perseverance, hard work, and camaraderie. We are confident that you are fully prepared to take the challenges by the horn and will serve the industry to the best as you pursue and excel in all your future endeavors. Congratulations to all the graduates and thank you. राष्ट्र गवर्नर गारो मुख्य अतिथि का पालगो ने इका ग्रेजुएशन कोर्सों में विद्यार्थियों की आइना पुरस्कार आलू मेडल सिक्लन टीचर मुख्य का माना अंदर की तरफ से कि लेदर सेक्टर की जो जो भारत देश में दृष्टि को चुस्ते चाला प्रदान होता होंगे या तो कोई दशाब्दाल में जी चाइना इरंगान ने डोमिनेट चेस्टा चाइना है काकुंडा इतर देश हम लोगों ने वाला फैक्ट्रीज नहीं वाला मैन्युफैक्चरिंग यूनिट के फैक्ट को वाली अटलांटी आलोचना तोड़ना रहो तो कि रंगान की देश हम लोगों ने चला प्रदान करता कंजन भी एंड मानो देश हम परिस्थिति चूसते उनका नालगो है तो राष्ट्र आलो इरंगम लो आग्रगामी का होती � और साहिक उल्लू दी इका एफडीडीआई लोग आने चेन्नई लो लेदर रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट तो दी अका शिक्षण अपन तो डांट की पाकिस्तान तो नामो लेदर पार्क से पार्क चेस तो नामो एक रहना मैन्युफैक्चरिंग फैसिलिटी इका पेट को डांट के सिद्धांत का उन्हें वाले की मंची इंसेंटिव्स इस तो नामो तो राव राव and FDDI is a great deal of work and we have a great deal of work in Atlantic Parasitthi Valla and we have a great deal of work in Atlantic Parasitthi Valla. We all know that the leather industry has been dominated by China in the last 2-3 decades. But from our government perspective also, the sector has now become important because many companies, many buyers, Manufacturers today realize that uh, putting uh, everything in China causes lots of risk 
and uh, within our country there are five six states who are trying to do well in this sector we are also hoping that uh, because of the ecosystem that we are providing Telangana also can become one of the leading states. We send large number of students every year to FDDI, to CLRI in Chennai to receive training. We have dedicated leather parks. We have written to Government of India also to sanction a mega leather park and the approval is awaited. And uh, we also support entrepreneurs. If someone does not want to get into a job and wants to become an entrepreneur, there are uh, facilities like the T-Birds, t etc. So on the whole, we hope that this industry, the leather segment, will see enormous growth in uh, years to come. And we are grateful to institutions like the FDDI for its presence and its programs in Thank you, sir.